So my name is uh, Juho Webstelein and you can try to pronounce it later. I <laughs> know <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated. I can I can teach it to you. But I mean essentially I do two things. Uh, I write, so I do this kind of books. I wrote a book about Webpack. You can find it freely online. You don't have to buy this. You cannot even buy this because I mean this is the limited edition and I don't sell this. I just give it away. So it's like for special clients and really good friends. And uh, I do writing and I do consulting. And I need a timer because otherwise I'm just going to talk like one hour. All right, here we go. Anyway, I do consulting to support my writing. I do writing to support my consulting. So you see, that's easy business. And what I do, I do go to companies. I help them to solve their pro problem because I mean, Webpack is super complicated. So then they need me and we make money and we make business and everyone's happy, right? <laughs> so anyway, today, yeah, so it's great, great reason for so today I'm going to discuss NPM packaging, like NPM packages and all that. So can you raise your hand if you have ever published an NPM package? So like most people, about 10 packages. Have you published more than 10? Uh, 20? 50? Uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, you see it's, it's very easy to publish. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm just, it's, it's good that you know something. So maybe you can pick up some ideas. Uh, and we'll see. So NPM, as you know, it grew really fast. I mean, I picked it up when it was here. And I, I mean, it had like 10,000 packages, 10,000 was a lot. Now you go, it's 600,000, next year is 1 million. So it's growing crazy fast. And I mean, it's not so simple because now we have 600,000 packages. How do you know which package is, package is good and which is not? So we have this quality issue, but that, that's beyond this topic. And uh, my practices, I mean, I, I went to this, I have this favorite curvers place here in Berlin. I went there, I, I always take this uh, bio curver. And in a way, that's packaging, because I, I know what I get. I get this curvers, there's uh, ketchup, and there are pommes, and with mayo. I mean, that's the package. So I, I know what I get when I order curvers. <laughs> so, and uh, there are two points. I'm a really good. Because now I know this concept, I always get the same concept. So I go to VM, I ask for curvers, is the curve is curvers. So, you know, it's the same. And recognition. Because I mean every curvers maker in the world is really proud of what they do. So this is why I mean you have this bio curvers and they're really proud because they have this unique product and they're really like they're great. Uh, and it's like uh, I mean another another thing, I mean related. I mean, I did. I had idea how to manage configuration, web configuration better. I did it here, and I mean, 20,000 people or something found it. Then one year later, two million, 18 million. You see, I'm getting recognized. If I got one cent for every download, I wouldn't have to be here. I would be so rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I know that people are using my work. That's fine. But I mean, I'm not making any profit out of this, so that's not so fun. But yeah. Just one part. Uh, what's in a published package? Of course, there is source code. Or actually, this is this might not be approved because you can publish anything. You can publish images. You can publish binary data, and so on. So it doesn't have to contain source. But I mean, 99% of packages contain source code. Maybe there's some kind of license that tells you that you can use this in this in this manner. Maybe some kind of readme to describe what's, what's this package about. Not every package even has a readme, but I mean most of them. If the developer is nice, there's a change log. They tell what's changed in this and that version. If there's no change log, good luck. <laughs> uh, there's some metadata, so they have package testing. And uh, it's, I think it's this one thing that people do really wrong, is that they push everything to NPM. So then you get like 100 megabytes when you download one package, not very fun. So you should set files property and files in such a way that you get only the files you need, not everything. So package JSON. So no comments. I mean, you, can ha you have this JSON file and you cannot write them comments. So you cannot tell people why I wrote this line in this configuration file. This is completely idiotic. 
Because, I mean, the point of configuration file is to communicate to other people that what this thing does, and I mean, there, there's a thing. I mean, this is what I would like to write, but I cannot because NPM doesn't support it. So this code, it won't ever work. So in NPM package station, you have scripts. You have like start, this is like for development. Maybe you have some test, test target. Let me make this easier. You have test target. Maybe you have some convention, like namespacing. It's just something for the coder. So you run coverage tests, tests yeah, you have test coverage, and so on and so on. And then you also have these like lifecycle hooks, like pre and post. So you can have a command and you can tell NPM that we should run this and that script before or after. And these are actually very useful because when you're publishing a package or versioning a package, you can run tests and make sure that the package won't suck. So, and then there are some exceptions, pre-publish only and so on and so on because they made some design mistakes in the past. So then they have to perhaps in NPM5. But I mean, it's, in, it's in, the, in the book, so you can, I'll link to the book later. So now something called entries. So this bin, bin thing here, it's, a, it's like the binary. So you have package name, and let's say you have curry burst package, and then you can write curry burst, and now it's going to run the, this bin index. And then you have main, which points when you import, it's going through the main. And you might have model. Model, it, it's something that bundlers pick up. So you have webpack or rollup or whatever, and they're going to look in the model, and this is for tree hacking, advanced feature. But I mean, most packages, they don't even have this. Uh, then we have dependencies. I mean, yeah, dependencies, it's so important, it's twice in the title. So you see, and uh, yeah, yeah, so dependencies, what, what do I need uh, to run this package? So, uh, and then I have de development dependencies. These are something used during development and peer dependencies. And this is something you tell the user that here's the range, you have to install one of these versions. Uh, and this is actually, it gets more complicated because this depends on context. So in application context, the split between, between dependencies and dev dependencies is not, so, it's not so clear. But in case of packages you push to people, then it's more clear. But I mean, it, it depends on context and you have more, more of these fields. Uh, then you have links, like you, you tell people that you can find the code here. There's the home page, you can report logs here. And even more, like keywords. I mean, it's like search engine optimization, except for NPM. So you have to write keywords and you hope that people find your package. Well, sometimes you might have something related to tooling, like ESLint. You might have ESLint configuration in your package station. Uh, and okay, all right, let's 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 consider that you're like calling something, right? And then you realize that I need I need a table, and I don't feel like writing a table. So what to, what to do next? So I mean, do I write the table actually? Do I write or not? Uh, can I find existing table? And it's like, yeah, I didn't find a nice table library. I'm going to write one by one by itself. Actually, I did it this I did this once. I mean. I, I was like looking, looking at the table libraries, and I was like, all of these suck. Uh, then I wrote my own. I spent about 200 hours on this. So it's my, I, I understand how this works. And now I don't have to use other table libraries because I wrote my own. <laughs> so uh, who pays for the work? In, in case of this table library, uh, there, there is this uh, company in the US uh, that paid me a lot of money to develop this further. <laughs> so, I mean, they pay, but sometimes you pay, so, I mean, you pay with your time. So, to consume or to develop? Yeah, so if you're really lucky, you find exactly what you need, and that's it. And sometimes you find almost what you need, it is like 90%, it's missing 10%, maybe you can contribute the missing part to the original package. So now you don't have to maintain a change, you push the change elsewhere, and if everything goes fine, they get it. Uh, sometimes you find a package. I'll give you an example. Uh, like this one. I don't know if you know Markt. This is like the most popular Markdown partial compiler. And I mean, it's, it's great, but it's not maintained. 
So, I mean, something happens every year, like 30 minutes ago. And, uh, but I mean, it doesn't go forward. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, I mean, it doesn't supposed to be like this, come on. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so, let's say I, I want to get some pull requests in. I would have to fork this project, I would have to really merge them and maintain my mark to or mark whatever frank fork. Yeah, so I mean, then, then it's right. I mean, the difference between taking over and forking is that uh, if I take over a package, I will contact the mark guy. I will tell the guy that, hey, I can take this from you. And I, I will develop on top of that with fork. It would mean different name, different branding, and so on. And yeah, you might do the table thing. So you might write your own table library and spend 200 hours on it. How to package? So one, find a suitable name. So let's see. I'll, I'll try something. Uh, where, where, where's, let's, let's hope. Let's hope. Yes. I will try it a package because there's a name. So there's that drinking game. So how it goes is that you you have to figure out the name. That's like this. Because if, if you can find the name, then you have to drink. So it's like you can use this with friends. And you notice that you get drunk really fast because the namespace is so full. Because you have 600,000 packages, it doesn't take a lot of time to get really drunk. And for this reason, we have namespacing in, in NPM. So we have namespace. It's easier to find namespace than a name. And behind the name, namespace, you can, you can find lots of names. And it's December. I mean, this is what most people get wrong. I mean, it looks like this. I mean, you get it, right? This is compatible. Conver is compatible with December. So you have to figure out, did I do compatible change or not? And and that's essentially similar, but it's just in a format that people understand. But I mean, most people, they do this, so they're like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> and this breaks projects. I have something that you can do to avoid breaking your projects. Then it's good to communicate where my code will work. So if you're coding for Node, set engines. You tell the user that you need Node 8 or whatever. How about browser? No way. There's no property for browsers. But I mean, you can tell the client that use paid for set and use browsers list. I mean, these are nice tools that go well together. Browsers list, you define that, yeah, I want to support like the most popular browsers. I don't want to support all Internet Explorer. And that's it. Uh, maybe you build a package. So let's say I have some custom features. I found the newest index, and yeah, maybe use Babel to compile it. Uh, what if I want find one tab bundle that I can give to CDN to serve? Again, Babel bundlers. So we take the code. I mean, the actual code is here on the left. We get bundle on the right, and here's the bundler in the middle. So that's kind of why it's bundler. That's why it's the name bundler because it makes these bundles, right? But what if we want to use some other language? Well, compile the JavaScript anyway. We have the TypeScript, it gives JavaScript, it gives type definition, things work. Uh, tree shaking, it's a bit complicated. You have to compile it in a very specific way and set model property. Uh, for, if you use Webpack, <coughs> there is a tree shaking solution for CommonJS, so you might even skip this step. But I mean, it's like, uh, anyway, it's not, as, it's not so simple, always. And yeah, what if I want to deal with styling? I mean, does anyone know how to do this? Can you raise your hand if you know? Yeah? So anyway, we can discuss this later because it's like, good luck. There's, I mean, there's no standard way to deal with styling yet. Maybe the answer is different in one year, but uh, I mean, now it's complicated. Publish the package. So set NPM version, this and that, then NPM publish. And sometimes, if you have lots of users, you find one feedback, do pre-release. So now you have this test release, you tell users, try this, does it break something or not? And I mean, it's super boring to write NPM version, NPM publish, 
we can automate these things. Maybe you need to do some adjustments. Like uh, if one day you notice that I mean this sucks. I don't want to maintain this anymore. Let's npm deprecate. Or let's say we found some huge mistake, like security issue or whatever. We can tell users that you should update. Like we npm deprecate conversion and tell that yeah upgrade upgrade to that this and that. Or we, or we tell them that use the fancy library over there instead of this or whatever. Unpublish uh, only during the first first day. <laughs> Because I guess most people they remember remember left back, so we, it broke the internet. Someone took left back out of npm. It broke tons of projects. So that's that's after they realized that maybe it's not a good idea to, to let people unpublish anything at any time and so on. So then we got this rule. Uh, renaming is kind of renaming is kind of deprecating. You publish under a different name. You deprecate. You tell people to go to a new, new name. Sharing authorship. I mean, you can do this per package, but I mean, it gets really boring to do this when you have 30 packages. So instead, have namespace, and it's under namespace. Uh, then, how to consume. Uh, first, configure version ranges. Learn, learn how this works. Uh, often, we default to this, this thing. Uh, in the past, we used this tilde thing. But uh, this is the, and yeah, in some projects you might encounter this. It accepts anything, and it's just going to break things unless you have log file. Anyway, so log file. This essentially gives a list of versions that I mean, when you install package, it writes the version to this file, and it means that you can repeat the process. So you can go back to something that worked in the past, because if you have that mover thing, someone breaks the package goes against server, you still have information on, on what version works. So I would say that use log files anyway. Uh, and there's a story behind this. Uh, I mean, the, if I remember right, the developer of Yarn, they, they were like three years like, I can do this for you NPM guys. And they were like, uh, and then they worked Yarn. And like six months later, we had the feature in NPM. So sometimes they need motivation. So that's you need another tool to push the real big tool forward. Uh, and there is specific tooling that can help with this problem, like updater, which is going to it's going to pick up the new version, it's going to run your test suite, and it's going to see if, if this works. Of course, this means that you need tests, so you're gonna go without tests for this tooling to work. But of course, because you're good developers, always have really good tests and good test storage. So I mean. I mean, there is tooling that can help a lot with this. And to learn more, we wrote a book with Arkham, and you can find it online. It's this information and a lot, lot more. I mean, I need to fix this layout, but you know, there's a free version. Read it here, and if you like it, just buy it. It's still a little work in progress, but I mean, it's it's getting better. It's getting better. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, so I mean, if you like React, we are doing something in Finland next April, end of April. Uh, I mean, who wants to go to Finland? <laughs> yeah, so now you can go to Finland and not React. So it's like, uh, it's, it's more fun to go to Finland when there's something fun over there. So it's like. <laughs> So we have like uh, one day of workshops, two days of presentations, and yeah, I mean, I can discuss about this later. But I mean, uh, do you have any questions or do you want more about some topic? Yeah, so it was so good presentation that there were there are no questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can since I'm in advertising mode. Just go through the blog, read every interview. There are like 90 interviews. If you read through all these, you will learn so much about development. It's just insane. Yeah, I mean, it, it never ends. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for a couple of years. And uh, I mean, that's it for me. And I, I guess we are on schedule. So I guess it's our time's turn to discuss MRM. This is kind of related to what I discussed, but it's, yeah. 
I think I think I, I won't do this presentation for him, so maybe we just switch places. Right. <laughs>